If you are a new parent, you've probably heard the words breast milk. How important is this for my child? Very important. And for new moms out there who've experienced some challenges and, and, and just any kind of obstacles, we're going to be talking to you specifically about why it's important to nurse your child, the benefits, and, and everything that revolves around nursing. Uh, joining me to do so is Jill Bennett. She is a nurse, she is a childbirth educator, and she is also a certified lactation consultant. Um, she comes to us from St. Thomas Midtown Hospital. We're so glad to talk with you today, Jill. Oh, well, thank you for having me. Thanks for being here, because this really is one of those kind of situations that everyone mm -hmm. loves to know all the information they possibly can about it. When we have a newborn baby, there's so many things to think about. For the mom, nursing is one of the most important mm -hmm. things. Um, Tell, tell all the parents out there, first of all, why it is so important, the nursing and the breastfeeding for children. Well, I think just in general for the baby, I think the most amazing thing is there's no breast milk that's the same. Um, a mom actually creates the breast milk for her baby specifically. So it is not just a broad, here's what you might get, it is what you need. And so I think parents need to realize you are really producing what your baby needs um, which are different. Every baby's needs are different. So uh, to me, it's just the uniqueness of the breast milk itself. We hear how, how it helps a child's health overall, mm -hmm. their immune system. What does it do specifically in terms of benefits? You know, that colostrum that a mom actually produces in those first few days has those antibodies. And those antibodies, believe it or not, go into that intestine system and kind of lays down this beautiful barrier. So the bacteria, the viruses, the environmental things that we are exposed to just don't get a chance to go into the baby's system. And so it's kind of like the first medicine that you would want to give your baby is that first breast milk. And then continuing as the breast mi milk matures, it just continues to help the health of the baby. So if anything, these babies are healthier. Um, we found that they're having less problems with obesity. We're finding, I love the fact that they're smarter. Yes. Um, if you want the smartest baby in town, I always say, you know, why not <laughs> give them, you know, what they need. So it's just amazing to me just all the benefits that that breast milk will give to the baby. Sure. What do you say for new moms out there? Again, you know, so many of them are sleep deprived mm -hmm. and they're trying to get a baby on a schedule eventually. Mm -hmm. That doesn't happen initially. But uh, as far as them having any kind of issues, maybe my milk isn't coming in. Let's mm -hmm. start there. Mm -hmm. What can they do to help that? We are really promoting what is called skin to skin contact now, or okay. you're gonna hear it called kangaroo care. And what that is, is believe it or not, just putting the baby up next to our skin. And so what happens, that just wakes up these hunger cues. These babies are showing us that they're hungry. The more we put the baby to the breast, the more milk supply we have. I always tell us a supply and demand kind of issue. And so I think if parents will realize, if I can get the baby to the breast as much as possible, I'm gonna have a better milk supply. It's just kind of a simple business equation is all it really is. But I think every mom is concerned with, will I have enough milk? Will it come in in time? And we just try to reassure moms, it will, it will. We need to point out, by the way, that Jill has helped many <laughs> new parents uh, over at St. Thomas <laughs> in general. I mean, I know you've been there for quite a while. Right. You're also a childbirth educator. Mm -hmm. Kind of explain that role. As a childbirth educator, we are that, we call ourselves the front line. In other words, these are parents who have not had the baby yet. Um, and so they're coming into our classes learning about labor, learning about their birth options, learning about how to take care of themselves after the baby and the baby. And then with breastfeeding, we have classes that kind of incorporate how do I start that process? And we have prenatal breastfeeding classes so that moms can, and dads can come in before they deliver and find out some of this information. And that's really more of a comfort. Sure. The more I know going in, the more comfortable I'm gonna feel. And then of course that support continues from the minute you have that baby until even after you leave our hospital. So in that prenatal part, we're just trying to get the information to them, but assure them. Yes. Think, yeah, get them Absolutely. excited. Mm -hmm. And like you said, I mean, obviously there are ways to kind of get the, the milk producing quicker. Right. For some women, though, who just can't produce milk mm -hmm. uh, like they should, what, what are their options? Well, you know, one, I always go to the mom who says my milk supply is down, and then I have about a million other questions to ask them. One, about what they're doing, but then also about their health. And sometimes okay. there are some things about mom's health that we need to evaluate um, and see if we can kind of tweak a few things to see if we can get the milk going in a little bit faster. Okay. Um, there are some herbs out there that we always stress the pediatrician needs to okay first. 
that some moms can try. Um, we always tell a mom, don't quite give up. Does that make sense? Yes. Let's, yeah. tr let's go down this road a little bit farther and see if we can get things going. Okay. Mm -hmm. Talk about how long a child should be breastfed. You hear different things, mm -hmm. you know, and, and it's different for everybody, right. too. It's a very personal decision. But how long do you recommend? <laughs> well, <laughs> What we do recommend, and it's by the American Pediatric Association, is if you can exclusively breastfeed, in other words, that's the only thing that you give your baby for about six months, then you are giving them a great foundation. After six months, the pediatrician's gonna start working in the foods, working in, you know, making them a little bit more adaptable to some of the foods that they're there. At that point, you know, breastfeeding is a continuing of whatever you want to do for your life at that point. You know, I love to say a year. I would love to say longer than a year, but I think there's a point that I think a mom and a baby kind of decides this journey's over. Does that yes. make sense? But if they can exclusively breastfeed for that first six months and then continue on, with the introductions of foods, we're finding these babies are healthier. Yeah, a lot of women end up having to go back to work. Right. And that is something that, you know, then they, they're talking to their lactation consultant yes. and say, what do I do at this point? Some women pump, mm -hmm. some women, well, some companies welcome the fact that yes. they can nurse their child on site even. Mm -hmm. um, it's rare, mm -hmm. but what do you recommend for that? You know, we recommend at our hospital, we actually encourage our moms, breastfeed as long as you can exclusively, enjoy your baby. When you're about three or four weeks out from going to work or leaving your baby, now we need to start pumping. We need a little bit of a supply yes, in home. the freezer. We okay. need a baby that can take a bottle. You don't ever want to leave your baby with a caregiver who can't give your baby a bottle. So right. we actually, in our breastfeeding support group, touch on this subject every month. So before moms can go back to work, we have got a special little session in our breastfeeding support group about going back to work. And then at work, you know, you pump when you can, and that's what we recommend, at least as much as you can, because if you're away from your baby, you want your baby to still be getting that milk. Sure. And so really, employers are supposed to and are required to provide so a nice. place for moms to pump. And so, you know, taking the baby to work with you um, before you go back to work softens everything a little bit. And already knowing before you have the baby, where would I pump? How is that going to work? Kind of makes moms feel a little bit more confident about going back to mm -hmm. work. And then again, you're still providing that milk if it's in a bottle or if it's from you, you're still getting that great benefit from the breast milk. So yes, a lot of our moms, and we've got all kinds of ways to help you with pumping. Um, so a lot of moms continue to do it. Yeah, and, yeah. and it's great for obviously the oh. continuation of the production of the sure. milk itself. Um, is there something that parents should know, moms obviously, mm -hmm. of what not to eat for you know, their child mm -hmm. to be able to get it into their system <laughs> when, when we're talking yeah. about breastfeeding? You know, and that's a, that is so tricky because people come to us and say, oh, I should only eat this or I, I have to only have bland foods. And, you know, our theory is have a wide variety of foods. The more foods you eat, the better variety your child is exposed to. Now, some foods make us a little bit uncomfortable. If they make you uncomfortable, you are going to probably notice your baby is also a little uncomfortable. So, you know, logging your feedings for a while, trying to figure out how you feel, how is the baby acting, I think you'll notice that, that some foods affect you more than others and so we stay away from those foods. As far as medication, always tell someone that you're breastfeeding. I'm at the grocery store trying to find a cold medicine. Tell the pharmacist I'm